the Chinese think of the cosmos uh, in the thorn of the Wuji. And they think of the universe as Tai Chi, the Tai Chi. And the evolutionary energy that comes from the Wu Ji to create the Tai Chi. And it follows certain rules. And as you can see that the, the Tai Chi is represented by a circle called the absolute, which is and then inside the yin and yang, which is uh, a rotating, each interdependent with the black fish with a white eye and the white fish with the black eye rotating, spinning, spiraling. Each intertwined with each other, giving birth to each other, rotating like a sine curve or spinning and evolving like a spiral in the three-dimensional world. And all is created through this energy called Qi. The material Qi. But it comes from the nature of the cosmos called De, which is virtual. The virtual is what gives us the foundation. It's our nature. So virtue is our nature. So that we can be what we are. So a dog has his dog virtue and the cat has a cat virtue. A dog virtue, if he's in a cat, the cat cannot survive in reverse. And human has human virtue so that we can become human. And then the energy, which is the material energy, or Tao uh, creates into this energetic vibration, which is also validated by quantum science. It is nothing but an appearance of solidity, appearance of reality, and not really real. The Chinese believe that. But the Chinese ground this uh, cosmology unto uh, really uh, astrology and a way of life. So cosmology in China is totally intertwined with life and living. The Chinese believe that we have to live according to Tao in order for us to prosper. There also a saying in the Tao Te Ching, it says, Tao is great. The universe is great. Earth is great. But human is also great. We are all in one corner of, of the four corner in creating reality, in creating life. And Chinese believe that human is the most creative and most spiritual being among all things. All things, huh? not all living things, not all animals, it's all things. That means more than earth, more than the universe. Now we are in the forefront of creating life itself. All in the forefront of shifting consciousness. So the Chinese believe that if we shift our consciousness, that is the ultimate. Or shifting consciousness allows us to resolve and create. And therefore evolve and grow. So the Chinese, to the Chinese cosmology of Wu Ji, Tai Ji, and Tao is very important. The, the, the Chinese refer uh, the uh, Wuji sometimes as Tian Heaven and the Chinese uh, believe in this culture a life of following the calling from Heaven 
is the ultimate. The unification to be one with this Tian, which is this heaven, and then a calling from heaven will come to lead you how you live your life. Chinese is very rich with astrology, different way of calculating. One of it very famous is the book of I Ching, the book of change. But the book of change is more than one that calculate astrology, although that is really uh, what it was intended for in the beginning. It has become a very core study of Confucius as the most important study, because if we were to follow and understand what the heaven is saying to us, we have to understand change, essence of change, and change is the only constant. It is the truth of the material world. And to understand change, how change happened, is a, is a gate of understanding on the essence of materialism. It is a, a gate to understand the Tao. It is the gate of communicating with heaven. So in the old days, it was created because the emperor has to consult with the heaven. So they have to go uh, and ask and consult the energy of the heaven, what heaven is saying, and they use the aging. So we can see the cosmology in, in the Chinese sense actually ground onto how we live. It's a very practical thing. It's not a study of that but a practical application of that into how we live. A book on agriculture, uh, what the West may call it, biodynamic farming, has long been in China. But not only a book of biodynamics, it was a book of what you should do or should not do every day. Today is good for getting married. <laughs> Tomorrow, well, it's not good for going out. Day after tomorrow, wow, this is good open up business. And they go into a different level of appropriation to do whatever activity. And this is calculated based on the position of the stars. The calendar of China is built on the position of Earth, Moon, and the Sun. Unlike the Egyptian that built the calendar based on Ceres, Earth and the Sun. So it permeates the cosmology and astrology into daily life, into making living on every aspect of the Chinese traditional culture. And able to live according uh, to the rhythm or the law of the universe or Tao or heaven a whole ethical, philosophical system has been developed in ancient Chinese tradition. Of course, today uh, it has been uh, kind of put aside, but there is a revitalization of that in this new administration. To come into revitalization of this way of living, the administration uh, calls on a new paradigm, a new worldview to this tradition. And it said for the um, for the reality of the common destiny of humanity, we must take a oneness with heaven cosmet, uh, cosmo view. Well, Heaven, their meaning inside us because, you know, we are created from heaven. The heaven is in us. So that means connect with ourselves, to become oneness with ourselves, a true selves. Our soul, our deepest consciousness that comes from the field. Our Tao, because Tao is us and we are Tao. Right? And so we are 
in this whereby human being uh, or Chinese believe in this era to go back to this oneness uh, situation. We're going back to um, the situation uh, of harmonizing relationship and achieving goodness is a morality. And goodness actually is wholeness, is love and all that thing. But we won't go into that. The point about it is, it is cosmology is life and living for the Chinese. It's into daily drips and drafts of expression. And that tradition is gradually being revitalized right now. Cosmology is in every aspect of Chinese life. Cosmology is even into the Chinese politics today and Chinese paradigm. You can see the Chinese leadership in United Nations addressing energy of the universe, the yin and yang. And how humanity should work. In the new definition of the paradigm that's being promoted in China, the unity with the cosmos as our fundamental cosmic view, or the unity of the oneness with heaven, which is the cosmo, is our cosmo view. That means we seek that, right? And then harmonizing between nation. And then collaboration among diversity. Then achieving goodness as morality to create this Chinese characteristic, which is worldview, socialistic market economy. So it is penetrating throughout every aspect of life and living for the Chinese. Cosmology is a core of it. And now, even translating that into structures and system, into business reform, into economic reform, into reform of the goodness economy, it requires uh, the population, especially business people, to do the redistribution of income for the third time and to flourish together with all the issues, the challenges of everyone. But that is a very, very big demand because when you're doing the economics, you realize the market economy is not in line with the universe. It's not ethical that created all the things. We are now facing with an ethical challenge, including Chinese themselves. So we need to have a reform in ethics. And so therefore the Confucius ethics is being bringing up and they require the business to act accordingly. And to do that, it must come from the heart. It doesn't want their money because when they talk about this, the, you know, Tencent and uh, Alibaba all give a, uh, Billions, but that's not what the government wants. The government wants their heart. Government wants their creativity to create this new economy, to create this this whole uh, this whole uh, process, this whole new energy. Right. So we can see with the new rise of uh, revitalization of Chinese. A paradigm, cosmology will once again become very, very high in the Chinese culture in the modern days again. So, um, ancient Chinese cosmology is coming back into a modern expression, into modern life and living as it was once upon a time. So let me continue on the creation of humans in the Chinese tradition, which comes from cosmology. 
So in the book of medicine called the Yellow Emperor Canon, it talks about the creation of life, and it says something like this: the virtue of heaven, which is the cosmos, and the virtue is nature, or human nature, get merged with、uh, the energy of earth, and then. Dao or Shen, which is God in the Chinese thing, which is creation, enters. When it enters, our soul will start being formed. And the soul has three component: a soul from heaven, which is information from heaven; a soul from earth, the information from earth. And the soul of our karmic life, of our individuated conscious karmic life, gather in this right moment, and the soul is birthed. And the earth soul consists of everything of knowledge of existence. So when we die, the three souls goes back into the three places. When it births, it is a revolutionary, and it meets, and it creates the three soul united, and now, and we start coming onto Earth, and then the energy that drives us, the seven energy that drives us, which is emotions, different kind of emotion, joy,、um, aversion, sadness, fear, love. Desire and evil, evilness are the energy that drives corpore. From there, our heart mind is created, and then our consciousness of、uh, of the material world, which is the the tip of the iceberg of the iceberg model of psychology. Where below ice grub is the subconscious and unconscious, is birth. Then we have an orientation of thoughts and will, and then we start thinking about it and creating the rest. So you can see the cosmology. I actually talked about you know this not a man and a woman and they get together and then this is not physical. It's all about these energy that comes in there, and then creating the reality. Because long they said it is the gathering of chi that makes it the form, so there's no different than quantum science. So when we die, we go back into a layer and layer of disappearance of this information and peeling off. And so,、um, the book of medicine talked a lot. It also mentioned the book of medicine that. These are like three thousand years old book, right? So we, if we live according to the rhythm of the universe, and we don't lose our、uh, child-like nature, an average will live one hundred and twenty years. But there are four type of people that live longer:、uh, the people that are wise, and the people that are kind, and then the sages. And then finally, they call the true human. And if you reach a true human, you live together with heaven and earth. That means you don't die, or at least you're really, really long life. Sounds like crazy, but this is recorded. And Chinese medicine is not healing illness; it's healing lifeness. Is dealing with life, so it's a very different concept. How cosmology comes in, and everything is life. So, so the whole thing. So, if you have bad luck, well, you have a life sickness. <laughs> that needs to heal that, and you need to do certain things, change the way you live, change your paradigm to heal your life. So, even your life has bad luck, you can heal it. But this is very unusual. 
because everything is created from thoughts. Everything is created. So what is the significance of the three dimensions? Well, there's a saying called Yi Jia Shou Zhen in the Chinese. That means that you know it is just an appearance. You know it is just a clustering of energy to give the appearance. But you still use it, which is not real, to correct what is real. Because you think about it, it makes sense, right? The, the cosmos has no movement. Only when you become physical, when you go to three-dimensional, there is only change, there is only movement. And it's only through this movement of change, you can change in the cosmic reality, into the multi-dimensional higher level. So the lower level three-dimension movement that we can use the will of the universe to evolve, we can evolve the energy, we can evolve the field. So this revival of this Chinese wisdom in the 21st century is not coincidental, just like the um, quantum paradigm. There is no coincidence. Everything is what it should be because moment to moment it is calibrated to perfect. And karma is real because cause and effect. All information that is created of all action and thoughts and everything never destroyed. It is recorded inside. And that energy and that consciousness is moving. And when the right element is there, the appearance or the form is being created. The cause and effect of actions. And so this moment, the rise of quantum paradigm, changes the way we understand cosmos, changes the way we actually study the universe, changes the modality of studying astronomy. It's still there. But from the quantum paradigm comes the science, uh, the, the science of consciousness of life, be it it is epigenetics, neuroscience, psychology, contemplative science, uh, even integral philosophy, and so forth, so forth. So, cosmos under the quantum paradigm changes the way we are really doing a study and rebranding it or repositioning it back into life itself. Because in the quantum paradigm, life is everything and everything is life. There is only life, no more, no less. The evolution of life and the creation of life for evolution. And so the Western science are changing. If you think about today, uh, the separation, um, being reunified, we call cross-disciplinary studies or cross-disciplinary unity. Well, if you keep going on the trend, everything is cross, cross, cross. And then instead of split, like philosophy splitting up into all the pieces, but as we get enough understanding in the material world, it starts integrating, integrating, integrating back. And the integration process, we will end it up with just one subject, life. There's no more. So, Chinese culture is a life science of the past. It's talking exactly what the quantum science is talking about. It's talking about consciousness, the ultimate of healing. Consciousness, the ultimate of uh, of uh, creation. So the ancient science of life coming from cosmology 
it is really a good life science to help humanity integrate as one. So the Western life science of consciousness, Chinese life science of consciousness. One come from quantum paradigm and realization of consciousness. One comes from ancient tradition wisdom. In the 21st century, in the globalized world, where all wisdom of humanity is for humanity, has now come to a crossroad of integration, sharing, and further development. The educated Chinese in ancient time seek a different kind of life journey. A life journey uh, that is aligned with the cosmos. A life journey that moves Trotch to become a sage. And in the book of The Middle Way, it says, Your calling is your nature. But this nature is not your habitual nature, but your virtuous nature. So your calling is your nature. Uh, when you follow your true nature, it's your true nature, you are now becoming down. And if you continue to refine this calling and down, it's called education. You're educating yourself, but also you become educating to everybody around you as well. So we could imagine if we answer the existing question, this existential question of life, which we can now in the modern science. And then we look at this material world, where it's leading us. We might choose a different path for life, a different life journey, a different aspiration. Thank you.